Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Felipe. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Ghent University. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the simulations of electromagnetic waves on insects using uh, Blender. Uh, my background is in biology. And I'm a part of uh, this ETEN consortium, which we uh, try to access the impact of radio frequency electromagnetic fields on human and planetary perspective, which includes the insects. It's a consortium with uh, several universities and has uh, received European funds. Uh, I use in Blender about one year and a half already. Uh, this project, uh, w this talk will be more focused on Blender and not so much like in physics or this kind of mathematical formulas. So, uh, also, it's an ongoing project, so we don't have final results yet. Uh, we are in the second year, so we're going to have results later. Uh, so, why to study the uh, radio frequency electromagnetic waves insects? Uh, with the 5G nowadays, like uh, spreading the new generation of networks. We need to have more antennas because the, uh, the frequencies are higher and cover less uh, distance, so we need more antennas around the cities and other places. On the left, you can see like a normal antenna that you see on top of buildings, but also you can see lately they, they apply more antennas like church towers or even palm trees. <laughs> so there's different uh, more antennas on like human centers, and it might affect uh, uh, raise the exposure on people or other orga organisms like in insects. So, what's the 5G? 5G is the fifth generation of the network and operates uh, in mostly three different bands. Uh, two of them are more like uh, on the spectrum of 4G, like previous bands but they have uh, bands also in a millimeter wave spectrum, which is between 24 and 27 gigahertz. Uh, these waves, they carry more data, but also they travel uh, less distance and they have more also interference. So uh, organisms exposed to these waves might interact uh, more with the, when they're exposed. So usually like you have an organism that's exposed to the like the waves, uh, part of the waves are reflected, part absorbed, and this can generate uh, something called di dielectrical heating, which can cause some biological effects. Uh, also to say that there's no ionizing radiation, so it's not like cause DNA damage, there's no proof that 5G has causing like real damage so far. Uh, also, we're studying this because most of the publications is focused on humans. All the guidelines are made uh, thinking on humans. And there's not so much studies uh, about insects or other invertebrates. Uh, so what kind of insects we use in our research? Mostly we try to focus on pollinators because they have uh, like uh, agricultural relevance. But also we use flies because they, they are easy to manipulate in lab. So we could make simulations and also compare with lab work. So it could be a good choice also. And also we check biodiversity, other groups of insects. Uh, so how, how do we make these kind of studies? Uh, we have some groups doing ecological studies, which you check different areas, like you can compare areas with antennas or without antennas. Uh, to see if there's difference in the population, for example. We uh, have studying sites in Cyprus and Greece. Also, we can do laboratory works, like we can put um, like flies in the larval stage and then see if they like has higher mortality after they're exposed to waves or not, compared with control groups. Uh, and the focus of my talk is using simulations, so for this we need to use uh, 3D models, uh, software to make simulations. And the, the advantage to make simulations is because you can make different scenarios as well that it's not in the reality yet, but so we can uh, predict some effects. So the, how, how do we use this 3D, uh, how we perform the electromagnetic simulations? We need 3D models, so we can get them for different sources like uh, CT scans, photogrammetry, or even modeling the insects. 
We choose CT scans because they also give information about the internal anatomy of the insects. So that give more precision as well. Also, we have to calculate the, what we say, dialectical properties, which parameters like uh, permittivity and conductivity of the insects. So we check different frequencies and see how these parameters work. You can check per different parts of the insects, like separate wings or internal parts. So we have more accuracy with the simulations because different tissues can behave different, uh, in a different way with the waves. Uh, there's also simulation software. In this case, we use some software called sim for life It's an, a paid software, so it's not open source. Uh, they have like um, also models of animals to work with, but they don't have for insects. That's why we are trying to create uh, models for that. So how, how do we get data from CT scans? First, you have to scan the insect. So you put in a like X-ray machine. This collect the information from the, and make it like in a stack of images. This is a GIF that has all the, like say stack of the images there. And then you, you can see like, you can extract this information in a 3D model. And here you can see also internal uh, uh, structures like uh, anatomy of the insect, brain, other parts. Uh, so we use Blender to make part of this process. Uh, this is a rendering of the volume. So uh, here I collect the information from the CT scans and render this. There's other softwares that you can process the CT scans, but Blender, I thought, is a nice idea because uh, it, you can render, has more like uh, animation proper uh, features that uh, makes more nice to work with. You can also visualize better, I think. Uh, I got this, uh, 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 I got, I learned about this about some, in some tutorials from YouTube. Uh, when you like create these uh, renderings of CT scans, you can, uh, one of the disadvantages of CT scans as well, you don't have the information of color. So this color here is artificial. Uh, I made it like more random colors to check different structures. It's easier to identify different parts like that. So in this case of the mantis, like I make an artificial coloring, I could see, for example, the exoskeleton or the muscles. You can do that for wasps or other animals as well. And some other animations here. You can see like the more dense parts uh, are uh, stay in the image, the lower density parts are filtered out to them. Uh, but uh, to make the simulations, we need uh, mesh data because uh, it runs in the uh, simulation software. We need STL files. I use the Python scripts to uh, get this 3D data with different libraries that's available in Python. Also, using ChatGPT also helps a lot to create scripts to extract that and correct some problems. Uh, when you extract this uh, data, also you have to make a lot of cleaning because they come with uh, a lot of unnecessary meshes, uh, like floating things or even the base that you use to scan the insect has to be removed. There's also often damaged parts, like the wings are a classic problem for us because they are very thin, so sometimes they are not complete. So these have to also reconstruct later in Blender. And also that we have sometimes problems with fused parts because uh, the sample can be a bit wet and uh, like in when we convert to mesh, so the legs can be fused each other. It's a bit more complicated to work with. So here is an example of unfiltered model of a bumblebee. You can see the wings also has some holes there. So later we have to fix that. Uh, it's kind of hard to work with the fur because it creates some kind of volume that's not um, correct for the simulations. It's a bit also harder in terms of manipulation later. So in this case, we filter out with the scripts and generate a reading blender later. Uh, when we filter, then we have to also correct because uh, some structures come correct. So we can use like remesh modifier to smooth out some, some uh, models. Uh, and for the simulations, you have to guarantee that they are watertight meshes because it also creates problems uh, when you simulate uh, when it's not uh, watertight. In this case, I use a plugin called 3D Print. It's, called easy. it's coming with Blender. You can check 
if you have uh, no manifold uh, edges, for example. Also, rigging is an uh, important part because usually the insects come in not very good position, like they are dead, so the legs are not in the natural place. So have to do uh, some rigging. You can use like inverse kinematics to put them in a better position, for example. Uh, here's one example of a CT scan that they could see very clear, like where the exoskeleton was the internal parts. Doesn't happen to all the scans, so sometimes you have to generate, for example, the exoskeleton using solidify modifier. That's very handy, so we can have a bit more control. And uh, then you can use like internal tissue if you, if you don't have all the properties of the insect, sometimes uh, we don't have. So we consider everything like uh, one tissue that's average with the dielectric properties. Uh, we try to use a lot of scripting, uh, like to create some parts, for example, the antennas that's often also missing. It's uh, nice to create already with the bones and make like uh, easy for rigging. I think I need to explore later some more geometry nodes. I think it might be easier to do that as well there. Um, also have to use sometimes scoping tools. Uh, some samples are very dry, like depends on the process you use for scanning the insect. They are freeze dried and then you have this kind of samples. So you have to like use some scoping tools to put them back to the place. <clears throat> also, like we plan to use fur because we remove this because it's harder to make the simulations, but also it, fur is a part, important part of the insects. This can generate some problems I'll show later. Um, also, we're trying to use uh, physics like cloth simulation for wings or particles later for uh, like pollen to try to simulate different scenarios for the, the insect. Uh, when we export the models to the software, the simulation software has to be all in STL format, and each part of the insect has to be in a like, different file. So uh, for this, we use Sinforlife. Sinforlife is uh, software that you can make uh, electromagnetic simulations there. You can calculate electric distribution of the fields. Uh, so here's one example. like. We have we make a cube to simulate where the insect is, and uh, where the the wave is gonna go through. We have we can put uh, different materials on the insect, and then later it creates like voxels that will calculate the uh, electrical fields. In my case, I use usually 26 gigahertz. That's the uh, millimeter wave. And what I do is usual far field simulation, so uh, the distance from the antenna is not considered in this case. Uh, this is like the layout of the software. It also has Python integration, so we can automate some stuff. Uh, it has like this layout for simulations. You can choose materials or the frequencies, uh, the size of the grid, that's important as well because we need finer grid to have good details. Like if you use a not so fine grid, it makes very like pixelated because it's uh, a slice here, but uh, the voxels are not so good uh, in the situation. So you need to try to have good uh, resolution there. The problem also, the simulation times increases, like simulations can take, depends of the amount of cells, several days even to run. So we have to check uh, accuracy and performance in this case. <clears throat> so here, for example, it's a good uh, example of how the exoskeleton can be displayed in these models. If the resolution is not so good, you see it's more like pixelated. Uh, when it's a good resolution, it's more continuous. Uh, the the blue, light blue one, if you see. This is like example of a Drosophila fight fly that we simulate. Uh, also, there was this issue, for example, if this is not watertight meshes, uh, doesn't simulate well, so we need this watertight. Uh, what I said before about fur, it's the, this part with the voxelization is complicated because you need very thin grids to make it work correctly. So we're trying to think other alternative ways than just generate like spikes like this, uh, fur, like maybe clump them, 
could be our alternative. So this is how it looked like the results of simulations. We have like in the top what we call surface model, uh, surface uh, fields. So you can see what's around the, the insects, how the fields distribute, and inside you can see like how they distribute inside. Looks like a, like a CT scan as well. You can see how the fields are inside of the insect. And there's some difference here, like when you have higher frequencies, the fields go just more around the insect, like it doesn't penetrate so much as lower frequencies. So 5G has like potential to make more influence in the external part of the insects than really internal parts. Uh, in Scene for Life, like to see the results is a bit complicated it's, uh, to export as well as even JPEG. So we use uh, Python scripts to uh, get the data from there, and then we can plot like in Matplotlib or other libraries. So our workflow as results to export, we have ADF5, that's one kind of data, where we use Python to extract, and uh, by default you can extract VTK format, format uh, on the software, and you use this for the surface models. And then we use some plugin to uh, read this in Blender. So AGF5, it's a bit complex to work with, but we managed to use the script. Uh, here you can see like some plotting you can see, uh, of the electrical fields. We do like uh, the same way I did with the GIF from the CT scans. Here we can see the electrical field. So the idea here, we could also bring back to Blender this uh, visualization so we can do the same, like make a stack of pictures and put back to Blender using the same way I did before. This is useful because it's easier to manipulate in Blender. Also, can make renderings, and I think it's uh, helpful for visualize what happens uh, with the insect. Also, we I use VTK plugin to bring the uh, surface model to Blender because the idea was to post this in Sketchfab. So we wanted to create some like uh, uh, account there to put our models and simulations there as well. Uh, here's some workflow I've been working with, like uh, I use in Blender to create some, for example, some animation using Python scripts to extract uh, each frame as a STL file, then I send to the simulation software, simulate each frame, and then we can have some simulation, animation simulation in there. Uh, the plot you see on top, it's the difference absorption. It's called SAR, uh, so specific absorption rate. It can change how the insects move. So it could be interesting like when they fly or open the wings and different features like that. It would be nice to check this with some kind of animation and see how it develops. Uh, here's some examples of publications. So we usually check different frequencies and see how they look in the models. Another one here with Mantis, same thing, like we try different frequencies and see what's inside. Uh, so how we use Blender in our project, like we can use for cleaning the meshes, uh, rendering volumes or CT scans, correct like meshes or visualize the uh, electromagnetic waves on the software as well. Uh, one important thing uh, to consider, uh, since we receive public funding, I think it's important to make the data also reachable for other people. Uh, so we want to make the data easy to access, uh, also reusable, so what people can use for other kinds of publication, not necessarily just uh, electromagnetic fields. So we're going to use the repositories from universities, for example, for the simulations that are very heavy, we can put in the public repository. We're already doing some trials with uh, the CT scan data that we have, like some we already put in Zenodo, that's one platform we can put data there as well. So we have the CT scans there, five of them there already. But we, we want to put all we, we can there. Uh, also we have a Sketchfab page, like we created this to start to see how it works with Sketchfab. Uh, see the limitations of sizes as well. So we want to put full uh, segmented models there in the future. For now, we're just learning how to do it, but I think it's nice to already uh, start to share the data since the beginning. 
So if somebody wants to get some models, it's also ready to uh, download. We have our website. So if you want to check like other projects, we have uh, projects with humans as well and other things. Uh, we also have like some apps that can measure like uh, exposure with the, your cell phone. So that's also can be interesting for some people if you want to see like how is your exposure of Wi-Fi, 5G or different things, you can download the app in our website. And that's it. That's the authors and thank you for listening.